In the beginning, champ car racing was strictly an American affair. Front-engined cars running on dirt oval tracks at state fairs across the USA. In the early 1960s, the tracks turned to pavement, and car design ideas from Europe began to take effect. The success of Jim Clark and his rear-engined Lotus Ford would make the front-engine roadsters obsolete. These new cars were designed to turn right as well as left, and oval tracks were joined by road courses on the schedule. Across the Atlantic, just outside London, England, lies one of the world's most famous road circuits, Brands Hatch. For three quarters of a century, British race fans have turned out to see many of racing's biggest names compete just a few miles down the road from the birthplace of the rear-engined open-wheel race car. Brands Hatch hosted its first Formula One race in 1964, won by Scotsman Jim Clark over fellow British legend Graham Hill. Today, motor racing history will be written again at Brands Hatch as the thundering American champ cars come to race on a circuit named for an American icon, Indy. The championship leader hopes to write some history of his own. Welcome to the London Champ Car Trophy, next on CBS. CBS Sports welcomes you to a very special round. The Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford season, the inaugural running of the London Champ Car Trophy at Brands Hatch. It's Bank Holiday Monday here in England, a national holiday, and the fans have come streaming into the historic Brands Hatch circuit just as they did 25 long years ago when the predecessors of the current generation of champ cars made their first and only previous visit to this great racetrack. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Varsha. Happy to welcome you to the second season of Kart Champ Car Racing here on CBS Sports. Today it's the London Champ Car Trophy from England, tomorrow the German 500 from the Euro Speedway Lausitz. And then we'll have three of the four following rounds of the championship for you, all of them live. Now the story of the season thus far has been Canadian Paul Tracy, who has strung together three consecutive victories. Today he will try to make champ car history with his fourth in a row. Joining me to call the action, former racing champion Tommy Kendall, TK. Paul Tracy has been the story thus far. He is even on pole for today's race. Well, before Paul Tracy can tackle that fourth historic consecutive win, he has to tame a track unlike any they've ever seen before. Brands Hatch's short length, high G-forces, high steering effort, and no place to rest has the driver's concern. The plunge through Paddock Hill Bend and the compression at the bottom is so severe, the steering actually feels like it's frozen for a second. Paul Tracy was concerned enough with this, he asked his crew this morning to change the steering rack to give him a little more mechanical assistance. Here's Darren Manning on board going through Paddock Hill Bend. That's the compression right there it's like a big isometric exercise 165 times this is drew it's a tight hairpin watch how much time his hand spends on the shift lever up shift down shift through Graham Hill Bend. This is the closest thing to a rest they have, about three or four seconds before they head into Surtees. A brief lift of the throttle up into McLaren and through clearways. The road falls out under them. Think these guys don't have quick hands? Look at that correction. And that quickly, they're back on the front straightaway. Down the Brabham Strait toward the signature corner here at Brands Hatch. It's called Paddock Hill Bend, and that's where our Derek Daly is. The name Brands Hatch in England is very much like the name of Watkins Glen in America. You just know great moments of motorsports history happen on these great tracks. Well, the signature corner for Brands Hatch, of course, is Paddock Hill Bend. And Tommy, you mentioned it earlier, but here it is. Paddock Hill has a dramatic drop from turn one. It's like a roller coaster. Now, for those of you familiar with the world's biggest roller coaster called the Dragster in Sandusky, Ohio, this is a similar drop right down through here to the bottom the roller coaster does about a hundred miles an hour each racing car today will come through here at speeds in excess of 150 miles an hour they'll do it 165 times on average once every 40 seconds now you have to manhandle the car down through here which contributes to the physical punishment the drivers will go through this afternoon here at this great brands hatch circuit that's right, Derek. Now, if Paul Tracy can win his fourth straight, he'll be in elite company. Ellenzer Jr. first did it back in 1990. Alex Zanardi did it in 1998 en route to a championship.
And just last year, Cristiano D'Amata won four races in a row. That's elite company. Paul Tracy hopes to join this weekend. Let's hear from him now, standing by with Calvin Fish. Well, Bob, before PT can even think about that record, he has to survive and lead that charge into Paddock Hill Bend this afternoon. Paul, on the pole for the first time since 1994 on a road course, how critical is that to the win here today and leading the first laps? Well, I don't think it's so critical because I've won a lot of races not being from the pole. It's been such a long time. But uh, I'm looking forward to starting from the pole to lead the field down into uh, Paddock Bend, and uh, it'll be a good feeling. Starting alongside Paul for the third time this season is the young rookie sensation, Sebastian Bourdais. Now you start on the outside of the front row, that's where all the wins have come from this year, but it could have been so different yesterday in qualifying, Sebastian. Talk us through that final run through Paddock Hill Bend. Yeah, it's been a big moment, I was probably going to lap the pole, but uh, I got the moment, I had to upshift a bit earlier and I had to hold the steering wheel with one hand. I couldn't hold it anymore, it was too many inches in the corner, so I ran off and... Uh, second it still be a good position we did the best of them yesterday and i think we're in really good shape to win the race you certainly learned some lessons in the early part of the season can you take it to victory this afternoon sebastian yeah, i really want to do a podium at least so let's let's do the race and i hope to have a regular one this time all right seb good luck this afternoon the frenchman certainly has the speed bob can he turn it into a race result today that remains to be seen, Calvin. Now, 25 years ago, A.J. Foyd and Danny Ungaius and the rest of what was then the United States Auto Club Championship Car Series visited Brands Hatch, looking very much like it does today. The race was won by rising star Rick Mears, followed by Tom Sneva and Johnny Rutherford. We'll be back. CBS Sports coverage of the Champ Car World Series is sponsored by Bridgestone Tire. Advanced technology that gives you a grip on the future. And by Ford. If you haven't looked at a Ford lately, look again. say they care, but I need more than talk. Pacific Air believes caring is good. Doing something is better. From now on, it's gonna be a better way, a brand new day. Of course, in healthcare, you have to care, but people expect deeds, not just words. That's what we deliver. Change that to six. I'm happy to meet him. Get Preeb on a plane today, okay? I need him here. I'll take the meeting, just keep it short. Well, just as long as I'm out by seven. Hang on a second. Thomas, did we get a new car? Oh, no, sir. Your car is in for service. This is my car. Surprise yourself with the simple elegance of the Ford Taurus. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. for the Survivor two-hour season finale. Who will be the ultimate survivor? Don't miss the finale and live reunion show Sunday after 60 Minutes. Welcome back to Brands Hatch Circuit, site of the inaugural running of the London Champ Car Trophy. This weekend, Champ Car Series leader Paul Tracy goes for a historic four in a row, hoping to put some championship luster on a career that's been filled with success and controversy. The big story coming into this Paul weekend. Tracy. Tracy. Brilliant. Paul Tracy wins.
I was able to pull away whenever I wanted to. Zipping out of its pimpers class. Everything seems to be happening right now. You know you're living a charmed life. Paul Tracy's perfect three for three start to the 2003 season is unprecedented in the modern champ car era. But it comes as no surprise to those who have followed the career of the thrill from West Hill, a Toronto suburb where it all began 28 years ago. I just go out there and I, I do, do what I do and I, I love to do what I do and that's race the car. Well, I started very early. I started racing when I was six. I was, had the opportunity to race the Can-Am car for, for horse crawl. When I was when I was 17, and I guess that was really my first big uh, thing where people noticed me was winning the Can-Am race. In three weeks, I'm going to England to do the Grandstand Series with the Van Diemen Factory, and then maybe next year a Formula Three. In fact, Tracy stayed home that next year, 1988, and won his first start in what would become the Indy Lights Series. Two years later, he swept nine races and the title. A year later, the 22-year-old Tracy was a hot commodity. He made his champ car debut, then signed with front-running Penske Racing. His first start for the team came at Michigan, where he qualified eighth, but he crashed on lap three, breaking his left leg. I thought that was pretty much the end of my career right there. Far from it, Tracy scored 11 race victories in five seasons at Penske. He also spent a year with the Newman Haas team, winning twice more. And a five-year tenure at Team Cool Green saw still more success, but he failed to claim a championship, and there were whispers. Tracy would win or crash, and he's not a team player. You don't do that to me or to anybody on the straight away like that. Never. 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 I've weathered, I guess, through the storm of racing where I've gotten myself into trouble and problems with the chief stewards and negative attention from the press and negative attention from the fans. The guy was blocking me the whole way around the track. You're driving like a damn idiot. When it comes time to come to a race weekend, I'm able to just kind of put the blinkers on and focus on, on the race weekend. Between those weekends, Tracy enjoys his toys at home in Las Vegas. Yeah, I do have a lot of toys. A lot of them feed my, my own ego. And I like to ride motorcycles. It's, it's, a, it's a, I guess, a release. You know, the same with having a boat. I mean, you go out to the lake and just forget about racing for, for half a day and not have to talk about racing. I've run with, with the best in the world, and I've proven that I, I can run with any of these guys. So, I, I mean, I don't see uh, anybody out there that's mentally or you know, physically a challenge. Well, Tommy, you know Paul Tracy very well, and you've watched him race for years as we look at some of his highlights and lowlights from the weekend thus far here at Brands Hatch. What do you think of what he's accomplishing this year? Well, I mean, Paul Tracy's greatest strength is also his greatest weakness, and uh, anything less than a win is unacceptable to him, and that's led to problems in the past, but as time goes along, I think more people come to appreciate his willingness to fail in pursuit of victory. No question, with Paul Tracy, what you see is what you get. He's the big story in the Champ Car Series this year, but this weekend, to these tens of thousands of fans, the big story is the home favorite. His name is Darren Manning, and he's with Calvin Fish. Well, Bob, it was a great performance by the young Englishman, certainly the home crowd favorite here this afternoon, to stick his Reynard eighth on the grid. And Darren, down in Monterey earlier this season, we saw you in the thick of the action all day long, mate. You know this racetrack better than most. Is it going to take the same type of action to get to the front this afternoon? I think I think so there, uh, Calvin. You know, it's so tight here and so easy to defend, but uh, it's going to be like one of the closest races we've ever seen, and it's going to take some big mistakes or some big pressure to get some mistakes out of some guys. So pretty similar action, I think. Well, last year on his debut at Rockingham, England, he led. If he does that here this afternoon or grabs a podium spot, these Union Jacks will certainly be flying high, Bob. No question about it, but 165 laps at Brands Hatch is not to be taken lightly. The crowd is ready, and so are we. We'll be back to England in a moment. Earn your college degree in the most efficient way possible at University of Phoenix Online. Invest in your career and personal earning potential with a state-of-the-industry degree. Attend class whenever you want via the internet. Most students earn their degree in just two to three years. University of Phoenix is the largest private accredited university in the U.S. Call now to explore your career options with a trained counselor. The consultation is free. University of Phoenix Online. Call 800-208-1934. 
Own a timeshare? Sell it for cash. In the last six months, over $1 billion in vacation timeshares have been sold industry-wide. Now is the time to sell or rent your property for cash. Don't wait and pay another maintenance for your tax bill. Call right now and receive your free information kit to buy, sell, or rent your timeshare, campground membership, or vacation property for cash. Call now and place your property for sale. Call 800-318-6499. That's 800-318-6499. Call now. A brand new pickup truck is a beautiful thing. So protect your truck bed with Tough Stuff, the Rhino Lining Sprayed On Bed Liner. Hi, I'm Mark Oliver. Drop-in bed liners just won't cut it. They can damage your paint job and create rust problems. But Rhino Lining's polyurethane truck bed linings are sprayed on up to a quarter inch thick. They can take a beating and won't crack or warp. They're warranted by your dealer for as long as you own your truck. Water can't get under a Rhino lining. It prevents rust. Drop-in liners don't. And Rhino linings resist chemicals. Rhino linings are only available from authorized Rhino linings dealers. Remember, it's not a genuine Rhino lining without this emblem. Rhino bed liner is the best bed lining there is, period. 13 years, 200,000 miles, and two engines. But still the original Rhino lining. Get the toughness of a rhino's armor to protect your truck. Call now for a free sample of tough stuff, information, and the friendly Rhino Linings dealer nearest you. Focus, David, focus. Peter and Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Okay, woodchuck. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Nice. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to a cool, breezy day in southeastern England and the Brant's Hat Circuit, where the cars are now on track in preparation for the start of the London Champ Car Trophy here on CBS. Tommy Kendall, let's take a look at this great racetrack. Now, Brands Hatch, the short course is only 1.2 miles in length, the shortest course, road course the Champ Cars run on. We've talked extensively about Turn 1, Paddock Hill Bend, but every corner has a significant elevation or camber change in the middle. Druid's a tight hairpin down to Grand Mill Bend. Surtees, a flat fifth gear heading into McLaren, and then Clearways. And then only 37 seconds, and then they do it all over again 165 times. And those names, Halewood, Clark, Hill, Surtees, all the great British racing legends. Here's a look at our starting grid. It's been 51 races since Paul Tracy sat on pole, but he has one today, going for his fourth consecutive win. He starts next to Frenchman, Sebastian Bourdais, the fastest man in second round qualifying. On row two, Bruno Junquera, his best starting position of the season, starting next to young Spaniard Oriol Servia, who matched his career best qualifying run. On row three, Alex Tagliani of Canada, his third straight top five starting position, next to the only owner driver in the series, Adrian Fernandez, to Calvin Fish. Oriel Servia lines up fourth here this afternoon, he, and he may certainly have an ace up his sleeve in Jim McGee right over my shoulder here. Now, he's the team manager for Patrick Racing. Last time Champ Cars ran here was in 1978. Rick Mears won the race, and the race win was masterminded by this guy. Can he do it again this afternoon? Now, for Adrian Fernandez, he lines up six. He returns to Brands Hatch on a complete journey. He was a race car instructor here back in the mid-'80s. He lines up six, but he had to rebound from a big crash he had here on Saturday morning. Moving to row five, Mario Dominguez and Darren Manning, both career best starting positions for the young drivers. On row five, Patrick Carpatier, Paul Tracy's teammate, the fastest man in the morning warm-up, starting next to Michel Jordan Jr. of Mexico, who came so close to his first career win in round three at Long Beach, California. On row six, the rookie of the year leader, Mario Haberfeld, start next to Roberto Moreno, who won a race on this track back in 1980. Derek Daly. When I look at Darren Manning, I'm a great believer that a driver gets just that extra bit of emotional support racing in his home country against his great supporters. I expect to see that support turn into speed for Manning this afternoon. And Michelle Jourdain, three weeks ago at Long Beach, the dominant driver. He goes from the pole to starting 10th on the grid here. It just shows you how tough this game is. This was the scene in round three at Long Beach. Leading into the final pit stop, Michelle Jourdain Jr. suffered a mechanical problem. His car owner, Bobby Rahal, could only shake his head. And it was an emotional scene as Jourdain came up.
just a handful of laps short of his first win. On row seven, young Malaysian Alex Jung, his best start of his career, alongside 96 Series champion Jimmy Vassar, who may have something for the leaders here today. On row eight, Tiago Montero of Portugal, driving for the great kart and Formula One champion Emerson Fittipaldi, starting next to young American Ryan hunter Ray, who was a surprise third quickest man in the warm-up this morning. On row nine, Frenchman Patrick Lemarier, a 35-year-old rookie who's been struggling this weekend at Brands. The same for the young Swiss driver next to him, Joel Camatias. All alone on row 10 from Mexico City, Rodolfo Levine will have the entire field of 19 in front of him. And we are moments away from the green flag. So buckle up and get ready for champ car action at Brands Hatch England here on CBS. Turn one is absolutely critical. Tracy looks like he's getting a jump on Bourdais. Interesting to see if they throw the green. And they do not. A wave off, yellow flag, and I'm sure it's because Paul Tracy was too far out in front. He's the pole sitter, but they want to see the rows formed up pretty well. Now you're on board with Paul Tracy carrying one of a number of onboard cameras we'll have for you today. That is Sebastian Bourdais behind him. And Bourdais will be carrying not only this roll hoop mounted onboard camera, but we hope to get inside his car as well. There is Bruno Junquera starting from the number three spot. Second in the championship points coming into this weekend. And now you're on board with the English favorite, Darren Manning from North Yorkshire, part of England that also produced the great sports car racer, Ryan Redman. Now you're on board with Michelle Jourdain Jr. for Team Ray Hall, a team co-owned by CBS Late Show host David Letterman. And now you're on board with ageless Roberto Moreno, 44 years old, won the prestigious Formula Ford Festival here at Brands Hatch back in 1980, and he is very, very quick. Once again, they come through the Jim Clark corner, this time nicely organized in the green flag waves. And Tracy got a little bit of wheel spin. Bordet has a nose on him, but Paul's on the inside, and Bordet lets him have it. As they stream down Paddock Hill Bend, Adrian Fernandez has a problem. He's slow off to driver's left, and he bottles up Michel Jourdain Jr. behind him as the field goes by on the inside. Tracy taking the lead at turn one as a key tactical advantage. The race is now kind of his in his hands with the fuel strategy and so forth. He's going to try to do a, a two-stop race. He's got to be out front and get to lap 55 before he makes that first stop. Now, Jimmy Vassar is reporting he's having a problem. He is in the pits. The American Spirit Team Johansson crew is looking over his car. And this doesn't look good. The team completely changed the setup on both Vassar's car and that of his teammate Ryan hunter Ray overnight, and it looks like Vassar has a problem. There is Paul Tracy. Everything has been going his way this year. He has started from the front row in each of the three previous rounds, always from position two. And on two of those occasions, next to the second place runner, Sebastian Bourdais. But here, he has his first road course pole since 1994, and he is leading away. I'm a little surprised that he's pulling away this easily. All the talk in the, you know, Tracy's won three in a row, but the talk has been that Bourdais is quicker, and Paul hasn't liked that talk at all. He's been reveling and waiting for a straight-up fair fight so that he can show that not only is he the veteran with, that gets it to the end of the race, but also on pure speed, he's got something for the young Frenchman. The Cooper straight and through Surtees corner. Jimmy Vassar is out of his car. Derek Daly is there. Jimmy, Jimmy, I know this has not been a good weekend. Uh, now you're out of the race first. What happened? Well, we made a lot of changes, um, you know, from warm up to, to the race, and uh, some of the changes required adjusting the suspension. I, I don't know really what happened. I think maybe, maybe the pole wasn't in the hole, or they thought it was, or something like that. Just a. Yeah, it's a mistake. We were doing a lot of work, I guess, and uh, just, didn't get, just didn't get it all, all put together properly. Sorry, Jimmy. The reason they made all those changes is Ryan Hunter Ray was third fastest this morning in the warm up, having completely changed the setup last night because they were lost. And they put that setup on Jimmy's car, hoping to get the same type of speed, and obviously something didn't get tightened up. Tough break for Jimmy Vassar, who was fifth in the championship coming into this weekend. On board with Sebastian Bourdais, plunging down Paddock Hill Bend and uphill Wood Hill to the Druids' corner. 
See a little bit of lockup out of the front of Bourdais. Very hard breaking up in that Druid's hairpin. And right as you get to the top, the road flattens out. And so the front wheels like try to lock, especially the inside one. Here's a look at Alex Tagliani driving for many-time Trans Am champion Paul Genalosi. This is a brand new team, and they have been progressing by leaps and bounds this year. Seems like every time you blink, they're back at Paddock Hill Bend. Tagliani is fourth, moving back to fifth. There is Oriol Servia in the Vistion car from Patrick Racing. Team owner Pat Patrick, one of the founders of championship auto racing teams, or CART, the sanctioning body of the Champ Car World Series. Uh, his team is being managed by Jim McGee, who helped wrench Rick Mears to victory in the last time the predecessors to the Champ Cars visited this track back in 1978. Jim McGee, the winningest chief mechanic and team manager in the series, and he is watching over Oriol Serbia's effort. And there is Mario Dominguez, last year's Jim Truman Rookie of the Year in the Champ Cars. This is a shot out the back of the 15 car of Manning. You can see Paul Tracy's teammate, Patrick Carpentier, running in ninth. Eighth, I should say. There's a good look at Darren Manning. Let's get to Derek Daly in the pit lane. The new pit stop rules that are enforced this weekend here at Brands Hatch State that you have to make two green flag pit stops. That means that you have to go to lap 55 here in this first run. I just spoke to John Ward, engineer for Mario Haberfeld. He said it's highly unlikely, it is very doubtful, that we can get to lap 55 without the help of a yellow flag. Now the teams will be required to make two green flag pit stops. You can make as many yellow flag or caution period stops as you like, but you must stop twice under green. Now that sounds a little odd to people. The reason for that is the pit lane here is very, very tight, very, very na narrow. Usually when you have yellow flag stops allowed and for your primary stops, everybody comes in at once and they're just worried about the crew members, that many cars and that close, close proximity. So they're mandating green flag stops to discourage the yellow flag stops. To do it on only two, though, you need to go to at least 55 on the first one. On board, looking through the visor of Paul Tracy, who has led 173 laps this season coming into this weekend. That's more than all the other leaders combined. Five drivers for 107 laps. He's been that dominating. Does it look simple? I'm a little I'm a little surprised that he's leading this easily, which tells me that the guys behind him, Bourdais, is concerned about fuel. Well, the players' Forsyth team may have something for the field today. They may have come upon some secret combination that no one else has. Let's go to Calvin Fish. Well, Bruno Jonquera currently runs third, Bob, and the team are already telling Bruno to save fuel. This is very marginal if you can get through 165 laps on two stops only. So all of the teams are very conscious of that, that they can save a little bit of fuel, stretch each pit stop an extra lap or two. That may mean the difference between finishing on the podium and winning the race this afternoon. We have 11 laps complete. A mere 154 to go. I asked Roberto Moreno before the race, do you count the laps? He said, nope, you just race till the checkered flag. Making the impossible possible. Henry. Welcome back to Brands Hatch Circuit of the London Champ Car Trophy here on CBS. Bob Varsha, Tommy Kendall, Calvin Fish, and Derek Daly with you. Let's take a look at some of the onboard cameras now. This is looking out the back of Paul Tracy at the start as he goes by Sebastian Bourdais to take the lead. Spin, but he was close enough that he forced himself down the inside, and Bourdais really kind of let him have it. Didn't want to go around the outside of Paddock. There's the view from Sebastian Bourdais' car, and it looks pretty orderly. But now we want to take you on board Darren Manning, and watch this. Focus. Watch the car in front of Manning. Watch this big wiggle from Adrian Fernandez and the evasive action by Darren Manning. Oh, gee. Cost him a spot, but it could have cost him a lot more than that. Manning currently runs in seventh. There is Adrian Fernandez, who is eighth. Paul Tracy is the leader. 
with 18 laps now complete. And Tommy, I can't recall that any of these drivers in practice got in this many hard laps in a row, and we've got a long way to go. Well, there was a good reason for that. They would run five or six laps in a row, and they literally, Paul Tracy said, you have to slow down and catch your breath. Patrick Carpentier, his teammate, said, I'd come into the pit lane, and I'd be gasping so bad that I couldn't talk to the engineers. So it's going to be real interesting to see how this works out. The gap first to second, Tracy de Bourdais, 1.661 seconds to Calvin Fish. For Paul Tracy, he certainly has a lot of fresh bridge stones in his pit lane again this afternoon. He's trying to use a similar strategy to what he used down in Monterey, Mexico. There he didn't run second round qualifying, he had extra tires. Same thing happened yesterday. He had the pole.